Banyarwanda mwese nshuti z'u Rwanda mwiriwe mu gihe dusoza umwaka w'ihumbi 2022 ndagira ngo nshimire abanyarwanda twese kubera kwihangana no kudatezuka twagaragaje muri uyu mwaka urangiye twashoboye gukemura ibazo biremere harimo n'icyorezo cya covid 19 twatangije icyiciro cya kabiri cy'ikigega nzahura bukungu cyashyizweho mu rwego rwo guhangana n'ingaruka za covid 19 none ubukungu bw'igihugu cyacu bwarazamutse cyane cyane mu gihembwe cya gatatu cyuyu mwaka dufatanije n'abanyarwanda bose twakiriye inama y'abakuru ba guverinoma z'ibihugu bigize umuryango wa Commonwealth Chogam nibindi bikorwa by'ingenzi kandi byagenze neza ibi byose twabikoze tuzirikana iteka yose umutekano w'igihugu cyacu kandi abanyarwanda bose babigize mu ruhare mu mwaka wa 2023 tuzaba dusigaje umwaka umwe gusa ngo dusoze gahunda ya guverinoma y'imyaka 7 twate intambwe ishimishije ariko biradusaba kudatezuka n'imbaraga kugira ngo tugere ku ntego twihaye umubano hagati y'igihugu cyacu n'ibindi bihugu byo mu karere ni mwiza kandi tumaze kugera kuri byinshi byiza ariko havutse n'ibindi bibazo nabyo bisaba ko tubikurikirana cyane cyane ibijyanye n'umutekano mu baturanye bacu muri Republika iharanira demokarasi ya Kongo for 2023 above all we are looking forward to a year of peace and security in our region where we can consolidate our development gains and make faster progress. All of us in the region and our international partners need to work together to implement the lasting solutions which have been evading us for the last two and half decades. There are regional initiatives underway led by the President of Angola, President Lorenzo, and the President of Burundi, President Ndaishimiye, and the former President of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta. I thank these leaders as well as the heads of state of this African community for the crucial work they are undertaking, which Rwanda fully supports. We also commend them for agreeing to deploy a force to help stabilize Eastern Congo. However, these efforts will not bear fruit unless the unhelpful approach of the international community changes significantly. It is disappointing that the international community pays lip service to peace and actually ends up complicating matters which undermines the regional processes. After spending tens of billions of dollars on peacekeeping over the past two decades, the security situation in Eastern Congo is worse than ever. 
To explain this failure, some in the international community blame Rwanda, even though they know very well that the true responsibility lies primarily with the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo, as well as with these external actors who refuse to address the root causes of the problem, nowhere else. This is a very expensive lie, which makes no logical sense. They speak the truth only in whispers, afraid to displease the Congolese government and compromise their own interests. But in fact, they embolden leaders of the DRC to take more and more drastic steps to consolidate its populist base in the process, hurting their own people. Even though the United Nations group of experts documents the collaboration between the Congolese army and the federal and other militias, not to mention the alarming rise in hate speech, these items are virtually ignored as if they are of no consequence. This attitude is shocking, but not surprising, given what Rwandans know and saw in our region in the 1990s. We have had enough of this hypocrisy. It is high time that the unwarranted verification of Rwanda stopped. Of course, we are directly affected. When the remnants of the militias that committed genocide in Rwanda become auxiliary forces of the DRC army and conduct attacks across our border. No country can accept this. Rwanda will never accept this as normal and will always respond appropriately because our security and stability are paramount. We could not have learned better from our history. There are more than a hundred armed groups flourishing in Eastern Congo, including Rwandan genocidas militia like the FDRR. These groups create constant security for civilians in DRC and in Rwanda. The reason this situation prevails is because DRC is unwilling or unable to govern its territory. Should Rwanda be the one to bear the dysfunction of this immense country? The situation of the Congolese refugees, whose very right to a nationality is denied by their own home country, is a case in point. It is not just a question of hate speech, but of active persecution over decades. Rwanda is among the countries in East Africa which has hosted hundreds of thousands of Congolese refugees for decades. We have more than 70,000 registered in Rwanda alone, and new refugees continue to arrive even now. Yet the international community effectively pretends that these people do not exist or that they don't know what causes them to be refugees in the first place. The policy seems to be for them to remain in Rwanda indefinitely, which only serves to whitewash the lie that they are actually Rwandans who deserved to be expelled. This is an international problem, and it requires an international solution, because 
the unresolved political issues which cause these armed groups to keep coming up and which underlie the hate speech we keep seeing are the same. Rwanda will not accept to bear the burden for the DRC's responsibilities. We have enough burdens of our own to bear, and we shall do so as effectively as we can. The conditions for Congolese refugees to return home in safety and dignity must be established. In any case, Rwanda will not stop them from going home in any way they choose. We also have Burundian refugees in Rwanda. The government of Burundi is making efforts to reassure these refugees that it is safe to return to their country, including visiting the refugee camps, and as a result, many have returned. This is the right thing to do. It shows that this problem can be solved if the political will can be found. I wanted to convey these points clearly so that we as Rwandans understand the current situation and so our partners and friends around the world know where we stand. At the same time, it's important to expose the so-called African experts and policy makers, wherever they come from, who have peddled lies and created confusion about Rwanda and this region. I want to assure Rwandans that our country will continue to be safe and secure in 2023. There is no doubt about that. And I believe that with the continued implementation of the decisions of the regional Rwanda and Nairobi processes, we can address this issue, bearing in mind that Congo is our neighbor and we will always live side by side. And in due course, I believe that our common future for all of us in East Africa and the Great Lakes region will be a prosperous and secure one. Rwandans will keep working towards that. Reka dukomeze tubiharanire muri uyu mwaka dutangiye nindi izakurikira. Mbifurije mwese n'imiryango yanyu we also take the opportunity to wish our brothers and sisters in the region a very happy new year. God bless us all. Imana ibahe umujisha.